Hey guys, Bruce the Budget Aquarist here. Hope you're doing great. Hey, I have a little bit of information for uh, beginners in the hobby. Again, you folks have been around a while. Well, this will be old hat to you, but uh, for beginners, uh, in case you want to go to the pet store and you want to know what you're talking about when it comes to the body of the fish, what's the caudal fin, what's the peduncle, uh, what's the anal fin, um, you want to have a little idea so uh, you don't find yourself in an embarrassed situation. And also, we're going to talk about, real briefly again, about the three types of uh, breeding fish. Mouth bearers, live bearers, and then egg laying fish. And hopefully you'll get a little bit of information out of this. Again, this is for uh, you beginners. And uh, you can keep this video handy in case you forget. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Take care. Okay, let's get this started and keep in mind folks, this is for beginners. So I know you pros are looking at this and laughing and maybe even making some corrections or additions to things. That's not what this is about. We're here to just give a basic for new people. So folks, if you look at this uh, picture here, let's start right at the top. That's the dorsal fin. Now, on the uh, when you see a shark swimming and that fin sticks out of the water, that's typically the dorsal fin. Now they can have a couple of dorsal fins, one in front, one behind it. They can have a, a variety of little spikes and spines down their back. But in general, when talking about the top fin, you're talking about the dorsal fin. Moving back to the tail, that's actually called the caudal fin. And then where that tail and the body meet is called the caudal peduncle, the peduncle. Below that is the anal fin, that's right at the rear end of the, uh, the fish. Forward more, you typically have a couple of small fins that hang down below the fish, and those are called pelvic fins. They have, again, other names, but uh, if you want to just generally talk and know what you're talking about, that's the pelvic fins. And then on the side of the fish are the pectoral fins. So this gives you a real rough idea of what they're called. Again, just so you can know when people say, oh, you know, is the anal fin uh, damaged or is the dorsal fin damaged, you can know what they're talking about. Now, keep in mind, there's a wide variety of fish out there. Uh, here we have a bisher or a biker, depends what you want to call it. And if you notice, this has serrated dorsal fins or finlets all the way down its back. So that's part of the wonder of this hobby is you're never going to run out of uh, oddities on fish. Now these are what's called barbels. Uh, barbels are on catfish and they are used for sensing food, used for sensing their surroundings and contrary to popular belief they do not sting you. Now that being said can you get stung or poked by a catfish? Absolutely but typically it is by a spiny area at the uh, front of the dorsal fin or spines at the front edge of the pectoral fins on the side there. So a lot of times what happens is people pick these up and they get poked by those spines and they just put it down to being the barbs on the, uh, or barbels uh, as they're actually called, on the front of the catfish. Uh, but that's not the case. So again, you've got barbels on the front of the catfish. You'll see these on several varieties of uh, fish. And again, barbels on catfish are not stingers. All right, class is short, so let's move right along to the types of reproduction in fish. Uh, number one are egg layers, then there's mouth breeders, and then there's live bears. And we're going to talk real briefly about each one. Okay, first we're going to talk about egg layers. This is a convict cichlid, a female. She's got the red spot on her side, which the males do not get. Otherwise, they look a lot alike. But these are an egg-laying fish, uh, along with uh, real common fish like angelfish. Um, there's just too many to even begin to mention. But egg layers do exactly that. Uh, female finds a spot. She lays the uh, eggs sometimes on a rock, sometimes on the glass, sometimes on your aquarium heater. I mean, places you don't want 
but then the male follows up behind her and will fertilize those eggs where they will then within a few days typically turn into what they call wigglers and that's where the egg starts to develop into a fish and the fish body feeds off of that yolk sac uh, that is the egg and develops into a an actual free swimming fish usually again within another three to four days depending on the species now a lot of times it's very difficult to tell the male and the female apart some are practically identical until they start laying eggs if you look at the diagram here they have what's known as a tube and the arrow shows where their tube drops out of their body on the female it's rounded uh, as you see there and that is so that the eggs can travel down the tube and be deposited on a rock then the male tube is much more pointed like a pencil lead and really in many fish not much bigger than a pencil lead and uh, it will just drop down just enough uh, that the male can drag his tube across the eggs and fertilize them and that's the whole process for the egg layers be careful when you have egg laying fish sometimes they like to move their eggs around they may lay the eggs in one place and sadly sometimes they eat them but sometimes they lay the eggs in one place then they pick them up and they move them to another location so always be sure that they actually did eat the eggs before you do any thorough cleaning uh, as you may accidentally uh, vacuum up or clean away eggs that uh, the fish have moved just for protection now moving on to live bearers this is what uh, you get when you typically get guppies um, platies and, and things like that uh, when when someone talks about a live bearer that is the male actually deposits sperm inside the female and then the female the babies develop inside the female and then when they're are ready uh, she will actually go and lay the babies just like humans do and again the most common live bearers are guppies mollies uh, platies those types now here is what's called the gonopodium gonopodium on the male this is more or less the penis although it is kind of a derivative of uh, the anal fin and this he can take and maneuver that uh, to develop uh, and deliver sperm to the female and you will see that little thing poking forward uh, uh, particularly on guppies as the males follow them around quite a bit and uh, that's uh, how the process works for the live bearers and last but not least one of the most fascinating things in fish breeding in my opinion and that is the mouth breeder now this is really an interesting process and I'm using this electric yellow lab to show you an example some of these labs have a black stripe some don't they could have a stripe if they're uh, on their dorsal fin if they're males they can have it if they're females so don't rely on that the best way to breed these is to have a group of six or eight of them and pretty soon you're gonna find uh, which ones are trying to breed what you will see is the male and the female will swim together in a very tight circle looks like they're fighting but they're really not uh, or chasing each other and what happens is the female will lay eggs right out into the open the male will fertilize them and then the female will scoop them up instantly into her mouth and she will carry them there as they develop into free swimming fish it can take weeks uh, three four weeks uh, in some cases for yellow labs for example uh, babies to develop fully in the mother's mouth and you will notice that her cheeks get puffed out and primarily her lower jaw uh, the back part of her lower jaw will be all puffed up because she's carrying around a bunch of babies in her mouth I've had them um, uh, as many as 15 to 20 of them in their mouth at one time it's really quite amazing 
what they will do then is when they feel they are full grown and safe, they will go and they will spit them out typically into a place of safety. I always keep rocks laying around that are large enough for the babies to hide under or lots of plants that are low lying and thick along the bottom because other fish will definitely eat them up and sometimes even their own parents. So there you go, guys. And even if uh, only one person learned a little something from this, well, I guess that's better than not helping anybody at all. So thanks again. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Leave your uh, question down in the comments. Get back with you as soon as possible. If you have a channel that you would like me to subscribe to, please note that in those comments. And I'll check it out as quick as I can. Thanks so much for your time today.